It's pretty hard to create a simulation to see the flow of a liquid or a gas. I tried and I failed, I tried and I failed again, and I tried and I finally didn't fail. And guess what? It's actually way easier than I originally thought. So let me show you just how simple it is so that you can do it yourself. And the best part is that this method is absolutely free. So stick around. We're making great progress to that 100,000 goal by 2025, and it's going to be very close. So if you're enjoying this content, I could really use your help by subscribing, and hopefully that puts this channel in a better position to keep providing a constant flow of good quality content made by me, Mike, a real human being. So what I'm about to show you took me countless attempts. Now, Teaching Tech has a helpful video on the subject already, but unfortunately the software has changed a bit, and that prevented me from having any success at first. So let's start with a super simple design and we're going to work our way up from there. This is a very basic duct for a 3D printer. We have a hollowed shape, we have a flange to mount it. What we need to do first is extrude a shape around it. Something larger is going to be better here. Ideally it would match the internal shape of our 3D printer, but really anything big will do for now. So now we have a duct buried inside of a large cylinder. Now we need something in there to represent a 3D print. And to keep it simple, I'll just create another cylinder and extrude it up from the bottom just to below the nozzle. And I'd like to see the difference as well, so I have one with a print in the way and one without. To make sure that this works on the first try, we can take the large cylinder and then we can subtract the duct, we'll subtract the hot end, and we will subtract that small cylinder part as well. Now we're left with a large cylinder with cavities in it where those parts were, and that is perfect. Let's export that shape as a step file. Now step is best here. Just make sure that you are exporting only one object and there's nothing else in your drawing. Now we can head over to SimScale and start a new project and we can name it. We're gonna see a prompt to import geometry for that brand new project. We're gonna go ahead and find the step file that we just created. We're gonna open it and import it into SimScale. So we could move ahead with the simulation as it is, but it's much better to make sure that our part is oriented correctly first. So we need to copy our imported geometry, then we can manipulate it however we like. And in this case, I need to rotate it based off of the X axis and I can set it to negative 90 degrees. What we're looking for is the Z axis to be going up and down and we want the bottom of our part to be identified in the software as the bottom. With that copied geometry selected, we can then press Start Simulation, and then we will select Incompressible. Ideally, we would want Compressible, but the free version only has this option available. We're not really doing much compressing here anyway. The air ideally has a place to enter, and it has one or more places to exit with very little resistance and not much of a pressure buildup. Now we have only one object, so it's gonna become the only geometry being referenced. So next, we will select the material, and that is gonna be air. Now we can select Velocity Inlet, and that's where the air is gonna be coming into the duct. Check to see which axis is aligned with the direction of the flow, and then also consider that down is going to be in the negative, and up is gonna be in a positive. So for a generic 5015 fan, we would have a number in the range of negative six meters per second. For a CPAP style fan, we have a much higher speed. We're gonna be in the range of 30 to 60 meters per second. So in my case, we're running with a CPAP fan, so I'm gonna set it to negative 60 in the Z, or negative 60 meters per second down. And since I have two inlets, I will do the same for the other one as well, and set it to negative 60 also. And now, we just need a place for the air to escape to, and we don't need to get anything fancy here. We can select the pressure outlet option, select the three most prominent faces of that cylinder, the top, the bottom and then the perimeter wall. So now we can click the plus symbol at the very bottom beside simulation and if there are any issues this is where it would tell you. The simulation is finished and as long as we oriented the parts correctly we're going to see a slice through it right away. Now this is already helpful, but I think we really need to visualize it and gather some useful info. So to do that, we can click Particle Trace, then we will select the center point of where the air is coming down from. 
Now, I don't exactly know why, but this is just a rectangular shape. I think they really should have a circular option as well, but this one works fine for now. We can then change the size to get it close to the right size for the fan supply. And we can make some minor adjustments to the spacing and to the size of these little trails as well. And now we can actually see what we came here for. Now that we have the particle traces turned on, I'd like to see the interactions much more clearly. So to do that, we can first change the render mode to surfaces or surfaces with a wireframe. We can then select each face that we don't want to see, and then we can right click and select hide. So I'm going to do this for the perimeter, the top and the bottom as well. I also like to see these trails against something much darker. So I'm going to change our geometry to black, and then we can adjust the opacity to whatever we like. I find that this makes it so much easier to see what's going on and to identify any potential issues like too much air being directed towards the nozzle or any dead zones like we have here. Also, the air is not being directed well to below the nozzle either. Instead, it runs along the top of the 3D print first. Luckily, I had really low expectations for this one from the start, so let's move on to something that's a little bit more advanced. I've created this version, which is a partial wraparound, and it directs the air much more precisely. It's also somewhat based on the duct that lots of people seem to be interested in for the Perusa Mark IV-S. I've also given it these internal little separations to make sure that the air is also guided much more around the sides. So we'll do the exact same process, and we will do one with a print and one with no print in the way. We'll run the simulation and since this is a much more complicated shape and we've already doubled the amount of work by having the with and without versions, it's going to take some time to run. So let's come back in a bit when it's ready. And there we have it. We can see quite a big difference between this version and the last one that we tested. Now in both the version with and without the part in the place, we have a very precise stream of air coming away. And it does seem to do a better job of surrounding the nozzle than the last one. But we still have a pretty big dead zone space just behind the nozzle as well. So I think there's a bit of room for improvement still with this design. I have that rheoscopic fluid already from the last video. So let's do a quick test to see how close the flow in the simulation looks to the actual flow. I've also created a mount for each of our ducts and I can just connect it with either one, two or three screws. And that also includes a way to get the air supply to that duct. Now I still don't have a way of mounting this so that it's at the exact height that I want for all the testing, but that will be coming next. I also have this block of aluminum, which is set to just about the exact height as the liquid that's in here. And that way this kind of represents something like what we have in the simulation software. And it looks as though we have that very steady central stream until it hits the dish. It looks as though we have the two streams coming off in this direction and what's not really shown in the simulation is a flow coming back to the center where there is that dead zone. So this test setup was just an approximation of what was shown in the simulation, but it did a pretty good job of showing the same kind of result. With the very simple version on the fluid only, we had a pretty steady stream, but when it was placed on this part, we had it separating into the two streams. And for this one, whether it was on the fluid directly or on the part, it seemed to be a pretty steady straight flow. A 
Aside from a little bit of waiting, I think this is going to be a really useful tool to figure out and fine tune our duct designs. This being a cloud-based software, these files are also available for anyone to see and to use. So I will provide a link down there below to the ones that I've created. There are other free simulation softwares available like Fluid X3D, which looks like it has a lot of potential and it needs some attention as well. Don't forget, we have a deadline of September 10th, 2024 for the Duck Challenge. If you want to compete, I've been able to secure even more prizes for the winners. Thanks to my patrons for your continued support. And if you like what I'm doing here, I will have a link below to my Patreon page as well. I hope you found all this simulating stimulating, and we will see you on the next one.